Hey, do you remember Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity? If the answer is yes, then congratulations, you're one of the five people who remember this game. When Age of Calamity was first announced in 2021, I couldn't have been more excited. A new Zelda spin-off to come as a prequel to Breath of the Wild was a fantastic idea, and there was nothing I wanted to play more. And this excitement only tripled when I played the demo, since it showed me the gameplay for this game was actually fun. Breath of the Wild had died down for me, and I was excited to relive this story in more detail. All of the characters from Breath of the Wild were cool, but they could have been expanded upon which is what I was looking forward to in this game. Also, even the trailer showed you how amazing this game looked. It basically took the unique art style from Breath of the Wild and doubled down. Then it arrived, the 20th of November, and the game is finally released. This is nearly three years ago, by the way. When the game was released, the first thing I did was play it immediately. It was like Christmas came early. You would not believe how excited I was, and this game did not disappoint. This game was an amazing experience, and I sunk like 80 hours into the game or something. I remember playing this game and grinding the levels before going to bed so that I could level up my characters. Fast forward to today, and this game isn't even on my Switch anymore, we got rid of it for storage. How did this happen? Well, let's talk about Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity. Something that I found interesting about Breath of the Wild was that as much as I loved that game, I could never bring myself to like the soundtrack. There were a few gems like Rivali's theme, but for the most part it was underwhelming and a lot worse than what I expected. Age of Calamity on the other hand has an absolutely amazing soundtrack that keeps bringing in good song after good song and it never ends. There are multiple songs in Age of Calamity that are far superior to Rivali's theme. And that was the best song in Breath of the Wild. The main theme is this somber and dire song that really illustrates how intense this situation is. And right after it is this triumphant song that really makes you feel like this. This is a battle right here. All the other battles, those aren't battles. This is a battle. And then you go to the map and it sounds hopeless and optimistic at the same time. It really makes you feel the importance of the task at hand. This is the song that plays while you look over the map. Whoever did the music for this game deserves a medal made out of real diamonds because this soundtrack is way too good for a spin-off. You may have a song from Breath of the Wild that you love more than anything in this game, but it would be crazy to say that this music isn't streets ahead. Before we continue, please subscribe. We're almost at 500 subscribers and that would make me the most famous person talking about this game in 2023. Anyways. Remember earlier in this video when I said that I was hoping they would expand on the characters from Breath of the Wild in this game? Well, they did. And they did it perfectly. All of the characters are similar to the way they were portrayed in Breath of the Wild, but this time you get to see them interact with each other on a much larger scale. There's this one cutscene where Daruk and Rivali start beefing for a solid 10 seconds, and although it obviously isn't much, it's more than anything we got from Breath of the Wild. Are we even making progress? We could just be going in circles. Good point. If only someone could fly above and Ooh, scout Ooh, get him, Daruk. As though I could see anything through this muck. Honestly, do you ever think All right, Rivali, all right. Urbosa is still Urbosa, Mifa is still Mifa, Daruk is still awesome, and Rivali is still hating on everybody. There are scary, mean monsters in the woods, and I can't get past them. You could probably sneak right by if you didn't have those noisy maracas. Suga is a newly introduced character in the story, and despite never even being talked about in Breath of the Wild, he's one of the more interesting characters in Age of Calamity. For the most part, he's kinda just awesome, and the cutscenes with him are always good, but his friendship with Master Koga is one of the best friendships in the entire game. The balance of Suga's serious and threatening personality mixed with... Master Koga is really great to watch. We all know that Master Koga is one of the most well-written characters in fiction, so it's incredible that Suga can somehow make him even better. Link also gets a surprising amount of characterization in this game compared to Breath of the Wild as well, which was probably the best surprise when it comes to the characters in this game. In Breath of the Wild, I was like, yeah, he's a knight. In Age of Calamity, I was like, this is one cool ass knight. There's this cutscene where Link is standing his ground against replicas of the four champions, and this scene really shows you how dominant Link is in combat. My only request is that the Zelda team makes these games easier so that I can look like this when I play. <laughs> if that wasn't enough, there's this cutscene later in the game where Link is fighting off against boosted up versions of the Blight Ganons all at the same time. This is lore accurate Link right here. One of the last 
last character is worth talking about is Astor, who was more so creepy than interesting. This is another character who wasn't talked about at all during Breath of the Wild, which is pretty weird, but this game isn't technically canon. So I guess that explains it. Astor dedicated his entire existence to Calamity Ganon for seemingly no reason, but we need an antagonist, am I right? Overall, the characters in this game are definitely well written, which is pretty surprising considering it's a video game, and that's probably one of the best things about this game. Age of Calamity is one of the only games that I was playing for this story. I was so excited to see the events that led up to Hyrule falling apart, and I was hoping that this would be one of the only stories where the protagonist basically loses. Unfortunately for me, the director of the game had other plans. The people making Age of Calamity asked themselves, how can we make a story based off the Age of Calamity without actually having a sad ending? We've got it, time travel! To this day, I still have no clue how Taraka would even end up here in the first place, and I have even less of a clue how these four would travel back in time. The story in this game gradually devolves and makes less and less sense, becoming even more nonsensical over time. It starts off very similar to the events spoken of in Breath of the Wild, but takes a massive 180 once these four showed up and changed literally everything. Rather than the champions dying in their respective divine beasts, they're saved and able to help fight against Calamity Ganon, which changed is everything. The story hooked me at first because I wanted to see the detailed events that led up to the collapse of Hyrule, so seeing this deus ex machina nonsense was pretty disappointing. The only reason this doesn't really matter is because watching the cutscenes was always the best part about the story in this game, so the story being messed up a little bit didn't really affect all that much. The only part about the change to the story that I liked a lot and I thought was awesome is this cool new design for Calamity Ganon at the end. I don't like the design for Calamity Ganon in Breath of the Wild, but this thing right here is awesome. I have no idea why they didn't think of something like this before, but I'm glad they did now. The best part about this game for me was definitely the cutscenes, which do have to do with the story. Some cutscenes are just the characters talking, which is usually more interesting than it sounds, and some cutscenes are these really cool action scenes, like the one where Rivali ends up getting the upper hand on Link during a fight. The cutscenes in this game shouldn't be as good as they are, but they're really good, and definitely my favorite part about the game. Now that we've talked about the story, the characters, and the music, it's time to finally talk about the gameplay. The combat is pretty simple, it's hack and slash and for the most part it's pretty standard. As long as you can press enough buttons, you'll survive. They did the one thing they need to do with a hack and slash game, which is make it feel satisfying. So in terms of combat, this game is great. There is a small problem, which is certain characters like Daruk and Rivali aren't fun, and characters like Link and Impa are fun, so it's not really balanced but I guess that's gonna happen. The biggest problem with this type of gameplay is that it gradually becomes boring over time since there are only so many moves and combinations you can do until they feel repetitive. This is the biggest problem with Age of Calamity. There are not enough options for things to do in order to make everything feel fresh after a long enough time. Most of the levels are interchangeable and feel the same to play, so why would I bother playing all of them when the combat feels the same? I think they tried to make the combat more engaging and refreshing by adding more variety in the enemies, and while elemental guardians and more Lynels are certainly fun, it's still not enough. It's not even close. There's certainly a whole lot you can do in this game to change up the way you play, but there isn't enough to do considering how many levels and little side quests there are. There are 150 side quests. That's almost more than Tears of the Kingdom. When I first got this game, it was probably the game I played the most, but then a few months pass and things changed. I had done most of what you could do in this game. Sure, I could unlock the last remaining characters, but that would require mindless grinding on a whole other level, which isn't something I enjoyed doing at all. The game started to feel more and more like I was doing the same thing on repeat, and that unique adventurous feeling from the start eventually faded away. Apparently, they released DLC for this game in 2021, which I'm pretty sure I heard about like one time maybe? I doubt many people bought this DLC, since I know that by 2021, me and many others had already stopped playing the game. Despite how amazing Age of Calamity was, it lacks so much replayability, which is what a game needs in order to stand the test of time. Look at a game like Ocarina of Time. This game is still played to this day because it has enough replay value for people to keep coming back. Without that replay value, a game becomes forgotten like Age of Calamity. This is an amazing game, and I would recommend that everybody play it, but if you're looking for a game that'll stay fun for years, this is not the game for you. I would just have to recommend a much more polished and replayable product, such as Link's Crossbow Training.